you know, Brazil's a very interesting market, um, and there's a lot of dynamics there that are, that are good for us and, and, and help us be successful. Um, one, one is that um, our two competitors have huge airplanes, big airplanes, 185-seat airplanes. And so they, uh, whenever you have a duopoly in a market, uh, the market is not served well. Uh, you know, they, the, a lot of things don't get done when you have a duopoly. Uh, they pull service out of markets and say, for example, uh, you want to fly an airplane, <laughs> try five hours, because <laughs> we don't have to serve your city, so we don't want to. And, oh, by the way, if you want to fly from 75% of the flights that you have, uh, but, you know, between the 25 largest cities, only 25% of them have nonstop. So 75% of the time, if you're flying between the 25 largest cities, you're going to make a connection. Sorry, you know, it's like we don't want to do nonstop, so make a connection. So uh, then you also become very inefficient. You become fat and sloppy and, and, and you just don't, uh, you're not, you're not you know, as, as, as lean and mean as you can, as you can be. Um, you know, those are all things that happen uh, when, you, when you have, have a duopoly. It just doesn't make you as good. And so uh, the ability for, and <laughs> interestingly enough, you know, there was a big market for medium-sized jets. There were 100, 100, 118 seat jets. And the perfect jet for that was actually manufactured in Brazil. And nobody was flying it. It was the plane that we launched at JetBlue, the Embraer 190. So uh, what more could you ask for? So I got the capital, uh, went down to Brazil, or bought the airplanes, uh, made a big bunch of noise about that. You know, the airline flying 100% Brazilian made airplanes. And then started flying uh, in these markets. And, um, you know, it's been incredible.